Um, that's the NT, infant mortality rates, which are coming down, but still there's a gap. Um, suicide. Interestingly, when you look at this and when you look at the latest data, which is not in this graph, um, there's been a decline in suicides and in fact there's been no major increase there when you look at statistical significance. So young people, death rates from suicide have remained pretty constant um, in the last few years. Um, particularly one of the things that people argued about with the intervention was it caused more suicide. In fact that's not true. Um, it's quite clear now from the data that's not the case. I think the biggest challenge though in Aboriginal health is this and that is children are now living to be adults, there's no doubt about that, much more than they were. But the level of development that children have at age five is a massive challenge. So the average, the Australian Early Development Index, which is now done, it just was done in 2012, it's done every three years. First time it was done was in 2009. So every child in the first year of primary school is assessed across the whole nation. It's available on the web, you can look at it by region, you can see the Walpi area, you can see the Pinnaby area separate to other parts of the, of the country. But what it looks at are the five development domains, the physical development, social, emotional development, language and cognitive development, communicative development. And this is an index based on something that started in Canada. And we know from the longitudinal studies in Canada that if children enter school developmentally vulnerable on two or more those, of those domains, they're very unlikely to complete year 10. It doesn't matter how good the education system is. And from John Hattie's research in Canada, we also know that the education system only accounts for a third of educational attainment. So two thirds of what happens in terms of your ability to do well at school is dependent on what happens before you get to school and what's happening in your family and what's happening in your peer group. Um, so this is a real concern for, for this is Central Australian data, but in Central Australia on the western side of the highway, 80% of children are developmentally vulnerable in two or more domains. And the two main domains are language and cognitive development and emotional development. Emotional development being self-regulation and self-control, and I'll come back to that in a minute. So this is really a lifelong disability that these kids have got. 80% of brain developments happen by age three, 92% by age four. Once this potential is lost by age five, it's not regained. Um, and that's the reality we've got with, and, and one of the child psychologists that works for Congress in our preschool program, he, before he came to us, did research in the top end for the education department, which he's never going to be allowed to publish, but he, he looked at a thousand year 10 students in, in across the whole of the top end, and he found the average level of um, literacy was between transition and year two, in year 10. So what happens if kids enter school like this? They might keep going to school, but they're not going to progress through school, they're not going to understand anything that's said to them, they're not going to actually be able to leave school with the ability to read and write. And so the challenge in front of us is what to do about this before children get to school. And even with all the Gonski reforms, if they come in, that's about fixing the education system. It's not going to address early childhood. So I want to talk to that in more detail um, later on. Um, that, that early childhood gap dramatically and quickly translates into this. You can't expect to see year three Naplin scores any better than this if kids are entering school the way they are. It doesn't matter. You can, there's some evidence from some schools in Melbourne that with intensive effort in the first two years of school you can make a difference, um, but we don't do that in the Northern Territory. The intensive effort they do in some of those schools is basically intensive family support programs with social workers, psychologists, a whole range of interventions designed to try and bring children up to an equal level by age seven. In Canada, one of the reasons why the gap in Canada between Indigenous people is so small is they've had a focus and for a long time they had a mantra that every child by age seven would be equal and they pour an enormous amount of money into early childhood to try and make sure children by age seven are equal. We're unfortunately nowhere near that and we're a long way still short of getting the political focus on this area that's needed. Um, so the, the Naplin scores just keep going on. 